I'm Dave Wagner. Welcome to another episode of Come On Down with Rich Fields right yeah. here. Everything's Price is Right. We're talking about the prices right here. Today, we get to go behind the scenes. Uh, like you've probably never seen before. Great. Actually. Yeah, what yeah. you're about to see is some video uh, shot by a <laughs> CBS cameraman the morning of Bob Barker's final episode. Wow. Not that a whole yeah. lot of this video refers to that. You'll see bits mm -hmm. and pieces that refer to that. But uh, it's just, as you watch, it's just kind of interesting to know, wow, this guy's walking around this stage the morning of Bob's last show, you know. Mm -hmm. Is Bob even at the studio? What's he thinking as he gets up and goes in his last day? You know, just all kinds of cool little stuff. And it's a little dark, this, this video, because he's shooting it in the morning, long before <laughs> even stage lights come on or anything. Sure. So and, and the cameras uh, at that point had not really developed to where they are today in terms of low light shooting, that kind of thing. Correct. Yeah. He's using okay. his own pocket little digital camera. Yeah. And the guy that shot it is right there on your screen. His name is Ed Nelson. Cool. Ed is a longtime CBS cameraman. He was there uh, when I left. He was there 16 years. Hmm. He's still there. So what's that make him? A 21 year veteran at least. Wow. And he's still shooting The Price is Right uh, with Drew Carey as we speak. So How about that? So here we go. This is a video behind the scenes of Bob Barker. I'm going to cut to it. I'm just going to start with this right here on Still Store because that plaque that you see there, Bob Barker Studio, it was dedicated March 11th of 98 on their 5,000th episode. Wow. In 98. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> in 98, it's 5,000th episode. And this particular plaque replaced a plaque that was uh, a Carol Burnett plaque. They had dedicated huh. the stage to Carol Burnett. So now comes, they're going to rename it to Bob Barker. Years <laughs> after it had been renamed Bob Barker, Carol Burnett came back to stage 33. Yeah. That's where she shot her sure. show. Sure. You know, the, oh, of course, the audience yeah. in the crowd. Yes. So she came back to reshoot a, uh, 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 what do you call those shows? Where they, uh, reunion. Revival. Yeah, yeah. reunion show. Yeah. And so they took Bob's plaque down. And just, Carol's, just for that just day. For that day oh, put wow. Carol's back up cause, so Carol wouldn't know. So, so Carol, if you're watching and just found out that for the first yeah. time, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. You still are amazing. Still There's are no amazing. doubt about it. All right. So yeah. um, I'm going to try to narrate along. Okay. Eddie, Eddie does a fantastic narration, but with technical yeah. reasons here, I'm going to have to be the one to go ahead and, and uh, narrate along with you. Again, this mm -hmm. is early in the morning before anything has happened on Bob Barker's last day. And he takes you through what we call the elephant doors, massive doors. Now, what you're seeing is back behind the showcase doors. So if you can imagine, that's you know door number two, uh, right there, and 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 he starts walking back behind the stages and everything. Would you mind pausing that for a minute? I sure can. Let me ask you a question: Is yes. this the area that you broke into when you were a young man with uh, your father? Uh, it was. It was, as you saw Eddie walk through the elephant yes. doors. It was before that. Before when, when that. You, when you saw the plaque. Yes. Okay. We, that's where we. That's we where were you were. That, we were in that outer. We were in that outer. <laughs> okay. Hallway. Let's go on okay. here. All right. See those stairs to the right? Yes. A little difficult, but those stairs to the right. That went up after Bob left. And you said, where did, oh, they give you another studio? And I said, right. oh, it was a palatial one upstairs. Yes. Those are the, those are the stairs that led up to that particular oh, studio. Oh, wow. Okay. So we'll just, uh, we'll just move along here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be going backwards and forwards for you guys so you can see. Again, this is, this is just walking through the elephant doors. Huh. Uh, door number three on the far left, door two right in front of us, and door number one on the right. That little podium you see on the right, that's where the guard would normally sit and not let anyone in to do what, we're, what, we, <laughs> what you're seeing right now. It's even before the guards got there. Yeah, you can tell nobody's there. Nobody. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just let this roll, and uh, we'll go through it step by step. How massive it is behind the stage. People wow. always say, oh, the stage is so tiny. But it's, it's really huge because there's a lot of set pieces and games that go back there. You can see some of the makeup, uh, 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 mirrors and so forth. Riches, that's my door right mm -hmm. there to my yeah. dressing room. I told you my scripts would be in that little box uh, right there in the morning when I got in. And then, of course, right across the way is Bob's. And we talked about this in one of the very first episodes that on, on his door it said WGMC. Do you remember what, what that stood for by tell, any chance? Tell me again. World's Greatest, Greatest Master of Ceremonies. Makes sense, yeah. Can you count them all? A lot of Emmys there. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 Emmys. Wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, nuts, huh? So um, this is kind of stuff that people just don't see. He didn't go into Bob's dressing room. I got to give Eddie props for that. He didn't. <laughs> he didn't break that third wall. You know. He didn't. Right. <laughs> right. He did one thing right. <laughs> I'm, Your Honor. I was. Your Honor. I didn't go into, I Bob's, didn't go into dressing Bob's dressing room. room. I was kind of hoping he would, so you could see. I bet you what did. It was. Yeah. Yeah. And this is going around now to um, 
that's uh, staff only. That's uh, okay. the green room, which we also use for morning meetings. I mm -hmm. told you it was two, two uh, uh, reads of the script in the morning meetings, and, and they would plan out sh shot sheets and so forth for cameramen and, and where the models are going to stand and so on and so forth. So that's that room. And then around the corner, right from there, is uh, hair and makeup. And Eddie, again, not that anybody was here, but this is really girls only back here. I see. So uh, unless these curtains are parted, you knew just to stay out of there. There's girls changing back there. There, you know, there's there's girls without makeup for crying out loud, Dave. And you can't you can't let that go out in public. Well, there you go. But then some of the cool stuff uh, laying around the studio, like look at this box back here. I mean, you can just imagine how old these pieces are. I mean, the old stage 33. It's old grip box. This is for guys to put you know stuff in and hmm. and uh, just look look what's on it. Wow, Jack Benny show. Jack Benny show shot on stage 33. I mean, wow. the number of shows that were shot on this stage, they call it a lucky stage. There's lucky stages in Hollywood, stages that have had success with shows. Yeah. Uh, when new productions come up, they want lucky stages, like the Seinfeld stage. Okay, you know how many, you know, you know how many shows want to shoot on the old Seinfeld stage? I'm uh, sure on, a ton, on the right? Redford lot. Yeah. Everybody wants to shoot wow. there because it's a lucky stage. That's so interesting. I know, they really believe it. Huh. They really believe it. It's amazing that they didn't name it the Jack Benny studio at one it, point. Isn't it, though? Know? Yeah. Oh, I was going to show you there, a uh, quick, quick shot. Hard to see, but those are CBS curtains there on the right. The oh. ones I told you they took down after Bob left. Right. Those so, are somewhere in storage or in the vault yes, at they CBS. Are. Yeah. Uh, you see the big backdrops they roll in. It's a trip to Ireland. Yeah. You know. So we're back behind the stage doors watching uh, just some other techs, guys that are there early in the morning. And Eddie is literally going to walk through, it looks like, door two at the Price is Right. Backlighting for set pieces and everything. And everybody always says, oh, what's the back of the wheel look like? <clears throat> there it is. That's it. I mean, it's not, it's not glamorous. Yeah. It's not like there's, there's, there's autographs back there. There's pictures taped to it. Is it high tech or low tech, that? It, 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 tech wise? Yeah. It's low tech. Low tech. <laughs> it is so low yeah. tech. As a matter of fact, oh, here's, some of the, here's some of the autographs. Models have autographed it. Uh, guests on the show have autographed it. Uh, uh, you know, old staff members have autographed That is so it. cool. Oh, Eddie finally turned on a light. Ed Nelson, oh, it's his. He's showing us his, yeah. his autograph. Uh, uh, this is Ed. That's Eddie showing us <laughs> his autograph. God bless you, Ed. That's awesome. And thanks, Eddie, for letting us use this video. We really appreciate it. So we'll just keep rolling here. It's, it's not a long video, and he shows a lot, so we'll just try to... Bob's last show. Wow. Uh, he autographed it a second time. I see. Gotcha. Good, Eddie. Nice. Appreciate that. Back of the wheel again. Plinko right there. Yeah. There's the back of Plinko. The old doors from season 35, the last season Bob worked. It looks so different with all the lights, doesn't, doesn't it? Doesn't it? So yeah. now, he's, now he's actually out front on the stage. All the cameras, even the Jibby Jim Boom and, mm -hmm. and, and, and the other three, four cameras are all lined up shooting or what will shoot. This here is where that white board is. Yeah. They call this a Zelda. And it's a mannequin on the other side in a black sweater with some colors on her chest. Hmm. And it's for color balancing, and this white is for white balancing. They uh, have to balance sure. the cameras before. Yeah. Color balance them. Uh, the, um, talk about what a jib camera is there. Uh, the Jimmy Jib Boom is uh, the, kind of the flying camera. It's, uh, sorry, I went back a little bit too far, but <clears throat> it's a way to get those flying shots across the audience where you see it right. sweeping and moving so seamlessly and beautifully. So that's the Jib Boom. And uh, How many seats are there out there? 300. 300. There's the Jib. And the camera's right there on the Jimmy Jim. So they all point. They'll roll Zelda out here in a couple minutes. You can see the podiums up there. I think there's a better shot of Zelda as well. And Eddie told me, uh, I spoke with him over the weekend, and Eddie told me that Zelda, um, the name for that mannequin, actually came from a real person who used to do this. Really? A woman used to come out. <laughs> I know. As wild as this seems, a, a woman used to come out and stand in front of the cameras in the old days, yeah. and they would get color balance on, on these colors she's wearing and a white balance on, on something white on her collar sure. or something or whatever. And so, you know, that, that just got cost prohibitive. <laughs> and so they put yeah. up a mannequin, and, and that they, makes sense. They, they still call her a Zelda. I mean, we still do that in television news where sure. we hold up a piece of white paper to, to color balance right, a camera. Right, right, so right. it makes exactly. sense, yeah. Exactly. So there's the front of uh, Plinko, and people always ask, oh my gosh, you know, what's it like to walk up the steps of Plinko, you know? <laughs> what's it look like up there? That's home base, by the way. Were you seeing those, uh, oh, yeah. those two podiums for the Showcase Showdown? 
it's 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 actually got two names home base and it's also called the turntable oh. because this big square part on the right actually turns around oh so before things are revealed the model will get back there yeah. with their prize and then they'll spin it around it's so it's a lovely video camera and there's Rachel holding a, a video camera or something like that so it's the turntable and it's called home base so from here Eddie just goes up uh, the steps of Plinko and the carpet isn't the best even with bad lighting, I'll tell you right now, it's, 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 not, it's not the best. But here's what it looks like when you look down Plinko. Oh, wow. As you stand up and look over the edge to drop your Plinko chips, you can see exactly where the $10,000 slot is. Wow. You know, about at either side by the z zero dollars. Was and there a secret to this game, Rich, as far uh, as you could tell? Um, as far as I know, uh, Dave, no, no secret hmm. to the game. Um, people have done so many different things. They they put them down and spun them. They've started yeah. on the far left, sure. the far right, yeah. straight in the middle. It, it just doesn't seem to matter. Huh. It's totally luck of the draw, you know. And, and sure. there's never anybody behind these things operating them. I think the only one that anybody's behind is cliffhangers. Oh, okay. The yodely guy. Yes, yeah. Because somebody actually has to move him up to the next stopping point. Sure. That's the only one. And, and it makes no difference to the gameplay this guy moving this right. thing. Right. Anything that makes a difference to the gameplay, oh no, it had to it had to run on its own. You know what I mean? You weren't the yodeler, were you? I was not no. the yodeler, okay. no. So everybody always asks, what's it look like uh, when you're standing at the top of Plinko? That's what it looks like when you're standing up there looking at the audience. Wow. Where do I drop it? Over here? Yeah. Over there? Over here? Wow, so look at all the lights. There's, wow. there's the four or five cameras, the Jimmy mm -hmm. Jim Boom and the five cameras getting ready to, 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 to line up on Zelda. Um, this is where Bob Barker would make his audience entrance from. If he didn't come out on stage, he would do an audience entrance, and that, that'd be the lighted area back there. That's a sound booth just for house audio, music, microphones, sure. things like that. This is a producer's table here. Mm -hmm. This is uh, really for Bob. Only Bob Barker ever sees uh, this tall thing on the right. There's a little better shot of it coming up. This has the show number at the top and then the exact games in the order they're wow. going to be played today. Nobody can see that in the audience. No one. No yeah. one sees that. No one ever sees that. I never saw that. I never looked at it on show days. I mean, I knew what the games were coming up. And, and, but it's just cool stuff for, to think, oh, the last day. Check it out. This is, this is hours before Bob's going to do his final show. And there's no one there. It's dead silent. It's, it's, it's darn near dark. And by the way, uh, behind these colored curtains back here, up at the top is the director's booth. Oh. Hidden by curtains. They can't see the stage by looking through glass. They're totally operating by monitors back oh, there. Sure. And I'll show you a stairway to that here. Eddie shows us in a couple of minutes. So. How difficult is being a good game show host? I mean, Bob Extreme. made it look effortlessly. I mean, it was Extremely just effortless. Difficult. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's totally the master. I mean, he, he was... Any show, I mean, I, I don't care what show's out there, Bob could sit with that show host and give them 10 cool things they should be doing wow. today to make the show better. Yeah. But he's, he's just got an innate uh, second nature. Uh, my podium, you may be able to see it there on the left. It's hard to see, but that's the announcer's podium. It was uh, up, up, up front a little bit further. They pushed it back today because there was going to be so much press standing out that they uh, actually put it in back a little bit. Huh. But we'll let the video roll. Maybe it just without all the lights, you look at it and it's dull. Yeah, I mean, uh, I remember going behind the scenes one time for Wheel of Fortune. Same thing, you know, it's just so dark and right. but you put the lights there on these. Oh, so, so he goes right up to it. So this is for Mr. Barker as he's standing on stage. I don't know what he needs the show number for. Oh, because sometimes uh, guests would ask during commercials, Bob, what show number is this so we can you know watch for it and wait for it? It's four zero three five K. And so he knows he's done with Lucky Seven. He knows Plinko's next. You know wow. what I mean in the back of his head. Showcase showdown after those two. This is so old sc old school. Old isn't school. It? Yeah. No video. These are slide out in and out cards, hand done, and then the showcases. So. That's the whole rundown for, for Bob's last show right there. Was Bob ever thrown by any of these games, or was it just second nature to him, do you think? Second nature. Yeah. The only time he'd get thrown is when a game didn't work. Yeah. And when a game didn't work, uh, he would just kick it. Yeah. Well, he seemed at his best sometimes Literally. when he did that, where right. he just... People love that. Yeah. Producer's table here, we're yeah. walking by, so where Roger Dobkowitz and Kathy Greco would sit. Wow. The, the, the seats beyond them are sound effects people, and uh, I think... Um, Sound effects and something else. I don't know what else happened there. This would be this would be good to have Eddie on because he could. Here, this is this is sound effects too. Um, this keyboard, <laughs> this keyboard back here is loaded with sound effects for different games. So depending on if you want ding 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 ding, it's literally hitting. A They're ding, doing ding, that. Ding. Wow, <laughs> yeah. that is crazy. Boop, 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 boop. 
Yeah. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> that is crazy. I know. I know. It's it's nuts. But you know, when it's not broken, Dave, you don't fix it. Right. Right. So you just you just leave things as as they are. Sure. So he's going to swing around and it's, oh, you can see the key is actually labeled with the various sound effects on them. Oh, shot sheet. Did you see the shot sheet? Oh. So everybody gets one of those. Remember yes. I showed you about shot sheets. Sure. So you know exactly what's going on in uh. every game. So you you get that. That's what's yes. in your door beside your door there, right? Uh, scripts and shot sheet. Gotcha. And, the, and the shot sheet I fill out during the morning meeting. All these big tables are for PAs. Every one of these seats are filled. They're all taking notes, saying exactly, telling exactly what the person bid, what each person bid, how it was. In case there's a problem, we can go back. We can stop tape, go back, mm. recreate it if we have to. Wow. Fixing the part that needed to be fixed. And it's also for records, too. And either side of the tables, all these drawers, they're full of game pieces and cards and parts for very, there's the godfather himself, hmm. all full of game pieces and cards for each individual game that's on the show. So, I mean, it's a, there's, there's a lot to it. Yeah. Pictures of models are also in here. Bob Barker autograph pictures. My pictures are all in these drawers. Anytime anybody asks for anything, this is where, this is where a, a PA production assistant would run and get it. There's prices, you know, reveals that the models would hold. You know, two thousand five hundred eighty dollars. Right. You know, there, there it is. It's and, right. and they're not just winging it here because the California Gaming Commission is involved in this as sure. well. This is an actual game. Oh yeah, absolutely. Ever since twenty one, you know, the uh, game show scandal of twenty one, uh, huh. they they clamped on everybody. All the different models, just different stuff, just garbage, just hanging all over. All the old stuff, just everywhere. You know what I mean? That is crazy. And everything is so, you know, low tech here. It yeah, just, you know. Switcheroo, mm -hmm. all the game names on them and everything. Golden Road, Hole in One, Clock Game. All the pieces for each individual game are kept in these little sliding drawer boxes. So somebody's job is to keep up with all these items to make sure they get back in the they right get spot. get back in the right spot, exactly yeah. right, right. So that they're put out for the game from the shot sheet initially and then and then put back out, you know, put back away where they need to go. They're just old staff members and things from years ago. Uh, pick a pair, bonus game, danger price. A lot of these aren't even be played anymore. And this is, this is backstage of backstage, really. This is where <laughs> Uh, uh, pages would sit before audience members came in and where they could hang out. There, there's the old CBS curtains again up there. See them? Wow. You would think they would have given me just one <laughs> slice of one of those things, right? Well, you got the tiniest of little pieces, the right? The tiniest of little, a well, swatch. You, but I, you may be the I, only I, person that has the tiniest of tiniest I little pieces. I think piece. I am, yeah. actually. Yeah. I believe Eddie told me he tried to get some and he, he couldn't get any either. That's so. because you'd ruined it for him. I, I did. Well, I think, he, I think he actually said when I showed up, I ruined him getting any other game pieces or any kind of memorabilia. And I, I, I apologize. Yeah, you, you owe Eddie something I was just here. Such, a, such an eager kid. There's a stairway going up to uh, the uh, director's booth again. Let me, let me wow. scroll back a little bit. Sorry if I went back too far again, but... I want you to see these stairs that go up to the director's booth. When I touch the uh, rewind at all, it goes way back. Right. Much yep. further back than I needed yeah, to go. Sure. It's like your so television okay, remote. He does a little spin for us. Thank you very Uh huh. Very artsy. Nice. Okay, so there's a stairwell that goes up to the director's booth, up hmm. behind the entire yeah. audience I was telling you about. And it's so thorough. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. He, he shot everything. Were you surprised when you got there um, what it looked like behind the scenes? Did you expect something different? Because you I were... I was totally surprised. Were you? I was shocked. Yeah. I knew Hollywood was... Uh, smoke and mirrors. Smoke and, and yeah, mirrors. Yeah. I realized that. And my dad even told me, oh, you know, it's going to look good out front. Yeah. But you go behind one little thing and you're going to see the glitter coming off of, you know, the sure. side of the thing. Sure. That's exactly how it was. Just... Holly Hallstrom, I'll be darned, long-time huh. uh, original model. Yeah. Um, and then just different pictures of different people to commemorate the day. Do you keep in touch with many of these people? Many, no. A few, yes. Uh -huh. I mean, everyone's kind of gone their own ways. And um, huh. like Eddie, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in touch with Eddie. Uh, the curtains here. Yeah, the curtains. I'm in touch with uh, Jeff Thisted. He was uh, a, um, a production coordinator for the show. Uh, he and I are really good friends. So this is what it looks like if you're standing where the producers are, looking out on stage at Mr. Barker. This is kind of what it looks like hmm. from that perspective. A couple guys getting ready to line up those cameras on Zelda. Again, click how, up. And how early in the day that do they start preparing for a show? Uh, probably 9 a.m. Okay. I mean, we didn't we didn't start shooting until you know before lunch. I mean, all the production meetings are going to start happening at about 10:30 or so in the morning. Right. 
and then we shoot two shows. And with Mr. Barker, we shot in real time. So we would shoot a show in, in an hour. And then uh, we'd break. We'd have another production meeting. And Eddie's walking outside now. Eddie's going to take you where the audience uh, go to real quick. This is where they come from. We could actually make this a two-parter. Yeah, we could. There, there's a lot more. There's you're, a lot. You're, I mean, you're not even halfway through this. Yeah, there, Third a, of the way, maybe. There's a lot. Um, so this is the stairs that the audience comes up on. They all queue up outside. I think he might take you out to the queue lines. There they are. Oh. That's where everybody lines up outside, all the way down this thing. Two rows, two rows of people. They'll be in, in the Bob Barker days. There'll be, oh, three, four, five shows of people out there. Time, wow. Times three hundred. Sure. Yeah. So there'll be days worth of people waiting. Is this where this J is James Corden's studio is yep, and all up that? Right okay. above us. Uh -huh, right? So he's giving you the perspective of, of guests walking in now for the first time, seeing something that says the price is right, how excited they're getting. They're, they're like, oh my God, we're about to walk <laughs> through these freaking doors <laughs> and we're going to be at this show finally after waiting, you know, two days, three days, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, they round the corner and then you're like, music's playing, right. you know? Yep. Another plaque for those folks to see as well. Music's playing, lights are on, maybe not full show lights yet, but oh my gosh, right away your heart just immediately starts pumping. You're like, this is crazy. How hard was it to get tickets? Uh, was, well, to get a ticket is fairly easy, but then with that ticket doesn't guarantee you to get the show. You still had to stand in line. Oh. All right, so you still had to stand in line and be one of the first 300 or 600 because there were two shows a day. And in, like I said, in the Bob Barker era days, that was difficult. Wow. People waited for days. And, by, and after he announced his retirement, oh, forget about it. It was, <laughs> it was three, four days. Everybody three, four wanted day to wait. see him one more time. Sure. Yeah. Or, 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 or at least for finally time. for yeah. the first right. time. Exactly right. So this corner right here where Eddie's chair is, that's where oh. my podium would normally be pulled up. But because of this uh, show, they've pulled it way back. There's, there were so many press there that day that they had to make room for everybody. These are all cameramen's chairs and everything. And uh, just, it's really fascinating stuff uh, for the folks that have never seen behind the scenes of The Price is Right and what goes on. Shot sheets, again, every cameraman has a shot sheet uh, uh, pinned to his camera so they know exactly what to do and where they're going in this particular act of the show. And there's Zelda, there's the front of Zelda. Oh. So, you know, real skin tones a white collar around her shirt, and then the colors on the front. <laughs> and then the colors as well on the front of her shirt. And again, wow. all lit up. This is very bright. And then they do their, their, uh, their, camera, their camera balancing from that. Do they do this for many of the shows that have a, have a Zelda? Uh, they have to camera balance for every yeah. show, so yeah. I don't know what they use. I think yeah. probably it's a circle. Sure. I've seen painted uh, squares and circles right. just sitting up there. We're kind of old school from the Goodson days, so right. they still do everything. Uh, they still do everything the the old-fashioned way. Wow! You look at this. It just, I mean, it doesn't look really anything it's like a, it does on TV. It's lifeless and dead. It really without is. Without lights, without the audience, and everything else, Dave, it's it's fairly lifeless and dead. Oh, that's amazing. Well, yeah. thanks for taking us behind the scenes, showing good. us this. We need to see more of this, though. Yeah, uh, there there is more. There's more. Uh, even on this particular tape mm. that Eddie has left us. Uh, let us use here. There's uh, Bob Barker's. After this, they taped Bob Barker's last episode. Mm -hmm. After that, Bob had a press conference for the international media. Mm. No one has ever seen that. They might have seen little bits and pieces on the news that night. You know, hey, today was Bob Barker's last right. episode. And you might see Bob out sitting in his chair talking, but nobody ever listened to what he said. And it was the only time that day. Remember I told you when Bob and I shook yep. hands goodbye? Yep. And I said, Bob, you know, Christy and I thank you. Uh, you changed our lives. Uh, we just sure. wanted, we left. And he didn't say anything, he just, he just pumped my hand and yeah. he, he grabbed my arm and pumped my hand and just walked off. Yeah. And I said, wow, I, I could see it in his face. He, if he said anything, he, he might have teared up. And he, and he didn't, you know, he kept yeah. it together. He kept it together the whole show, the whole yeah. day. But on this press conference, after everything was over, he's sitting in this beautifully tall director's chair, Bob Barker on the back, and the whole press is out now where the audience sits. And he had his microphone and he sat there and he answered all these questions. And I forget what the question was. We'll, we'll pick it up. I, th I think it was something to the effect of, <clears throat> you know, Mr. Barker, what are you going to do tomorrow? Hmm. What's, what's the first thing you're, you're going to do tomorrow? And he started and he put his mic down. And hmm. For the longest time. Wow. 
Well, and every and all of a sudden, yeah. right, right. ten thousand cameras now are because it was the shot everybody was looking sure. for. Sure, yeah. yeah, final final right day there, and you know, and but I assumed he he found something to do with his life. Yeah, you know his. Uh, his taking care of the animals yeah. and it really took over you sure. know his endowment stuff to foundations so on and so forth but we'll show you more we've got we've got so much to show you guys it's crazy oh, this wow. was episode five behind the scenes <laughs> i love it i love it it's so great seeing all this because <laughs> you know we we have one image on television yeah. this gives us a completely different idea yeah. you know yeah yeah a little less glamorous but fascinating I agree. Uh, yeah. A little less glamorous, but fascinating. Yeah. All so right. So there you go. Well, we, uh, we hope you'll join us next week for another episode of Come On Down with Rich Fields. Thanks for tuning in to Come On Down with Rich Fields. See more photos and videos mentioned on this episode. Plus, interact with Rich on Facebook at facebook.com slash come on down podcast or on Twitter at come on down pod. Have a question for Rich? Use Facebook Messenger to connect on our Come On Down podcast Facebook page. And remember, new episodes are live every Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern.